book that I wrote Or all the words that we spoke Yet only with our eyes Now is the time to choose Somebody wins and some lose I can see through your disguise Pay it down, hope for something better Looking at the clouds, the sun kind of echoey in this building. So today, as many of y'all know, most people know, today is Super Bowl Sunday. And you're gonna be like, Abel, weren't you just at the gym a little while ago? So let me explain a little bit. Let me go over the workout. So this morning I woke up at eight o'clock, went to the gym at nine o'clock with Josh and we worked out some legs. So let me go over the workout. So as you can see, we started off with a lying hamstring curl, one leg at a time. We did five sets of 10 to 12 reps, just really focusing on squeezing all the way up, all the way down. And then after the five sets, we moved on to two leg lying leg curls. We did three sets of a different variation. We went all the way up and then stopped halfway down and then came straight back up so that it took away the calf in that movement. Because a lot of times when you do a lying cat or lying leg raises, your calf gets involved a whole lot at the bottom of that rep range. So when you do it halfway up, it takes away that calf. So we did anywhere from, uh, I think it was like eight to 10 reps. And then what we do is immediately go into the lower range of motion and do partials for as many reps as possible. So both of those movements we did uh, for, to go into failure. Uh, and then after that, we moved on to the more compound movement, which was squats, barbell squats. Now this is a little bit different than what I normally do. Uh, most of the time when I squat, I do like a power squat is what they call it. So you kind of like break at the hips more and you start going down so that it engages your glutes and your hamstrings. But when you're doing a quad dominant squat, uh, you break at the knees first and your back, you try to keep your back perfectly upright the whole time and then you go down. My mobility is not as good as Josh's so he can go all the way down in a squat keeping his back straight up and then doesn't have to lean forward. When I start to do that, uh, my mobility in my foot doesn't allow me to go down as low and I will start doing like a good morning or something. You will see my back actually arch down when I'm doing a squat. So when you do a quad dominant squat, you're trying to keep your back up as straight as possible and then just break at the legs. We try not to lock out at the top as much as possible. So what I was constantly thinking of was the front relaxed pose in bodybuilding. You know how they do? They stand up, they have their toes out, and they flex their quads as much as possible. So right when I was about to start squatting, I would flex my quads. And what that does is kind of bend, that makes you bend your knee because when you start flexing, you kind of bend your knee in a flex and then you start squatting. So it's engaging your legs throughout that entire rep range. So the whole time we're thinking about squeezing, we're not just going through the reps, going you know fast down, fast up. We're actually going down slow and then going up, squeezing the whole time. And then on top of that, we did a pause set or pause reps. So we would go down, pause for like one second and then come back up and this was a killer. I was dying. We did I think five sets of anywhere from eight to 10 reps and we could only do about 275 pounds. Most of the time you see me squatting you know, 315, 405, but when you do a quad dominant squat and you're really focusing on your legs and on top of that doing that pause at the bottom, we were not able to go up much in weight. It was not a very heavy day. So after that, honestly, I was feeling sick. I was feeling horrible. So after that, we moved on to leg extensions. 
and that is where I really started to feel sick. I did one warm up set and I told Josh, I'm gonna have to go in the bathroom. I think I'm gonna throw up. So I went back in the bathroom and dry heaved for around five times. And I stayed in there for about five minutes and I was just feeling horrible. So I came back out uh, and then tried the leg extensions and I was just not feeling it. I was feeling so sick. So I tried to do another set and I thought I was feeling better and then I uh, did one more set of leg extension and then I was like, I can't do this anymore. It was crazy. So I actually had to leave the gym early, did not get to finish that workout. I have never done that through a workout. I have gotten sick and thrown up before, but never had to actually quit. Uh, so I woke up early this morning because I tried to get home before like 10.30 so we could go to church, but I came home and did not feel good at all. I just laid out on the rug and just laid out for a little bit. It took around 30 minutes for me to start feeling better, so I did not get to go to church either. So I think the combination why I was sick, I think it was the combination of waking up and doing a workout in the morning. I am not used to that. I have not worked out in the morning for, I would say, around six to seven months at all. I always work out later on in the afternoon and then on top of that I have not had a lot of carbs. Yesterday I had probably 70 carbs and below because I was going to have carbs a day because of Super Bowl so I was kind of saving that up. And so this morning I woke up, had a protein shake and just had some coconut oil so I had max 250 calories and I burned through that so quickly so I think it was waking up early uh, and then having very low carbs this morning, pretty much none, and having low calorie. And then on top of that, I took like a pre-workout. And I think that is what really kind of just set me off in a bad start of the day. So I just felt horrible. So I'm not a wuss. I'm going to come back in here. That is why I'm in the gym right now. I'm in the apartment gym. Shelby's working out. She did not go this morning. So she already didn't need to come in here and work out. But I was just going to come in later on today and just do cardio. That's what I was planning on yesterday. But because I did not finish that leg workout, I'm going to finish it up here.
You wanna race me, Gator? You wanna race me? Alright, ready? You ready, Gator? <laughs> Go! Hey buddy, hey. 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 you excited to see Danny? <laughs> So done with that workout, the second, or really the first workout, just finishing the first and added some abs afterwards. So that goes to show you, I don't always have the greatest workouts. A lot of people get on Instagram, YouTube, and see all these people work out, and they don't see all the failures. They only see what they accomplish. And I'm telling you guys, you only see the good things that people post. You never see the bad things. So as you saw, I could not finish that workout. Could not get totally sick, so I had to go back and do the workout so I did not quit. That's the main thing. If you have a bad day and you don't feel like working out and you get sick and stuff and you physically cannot do it, go back and do it later on or just you know save it for the next day and then do it, but don't give up. Don't go and say, well, this is not, I'm not cut out for this. I cannot do this. No, you keep going. If I did that and if I just quit, if I did not feel good or got sick, and I would have quit a long time ago. I mean, that's the way it is, but you have to keep going, keep pushing yourself. So now it is time to get ready for the Patriots game. All ready for the football game now. All decked out in all the Patriots gear. Hat, jersey, Shelby's got my hat on, and a jersey, <laughs> our shirt. But first we gotta go to Walmart before the game starts because we gotta pick up some food. So we are currently getting food in Walmart. We have the basket full of junk food, our once a week cheat meal. Parked in the best parking spot you can park in at Walmart. Only better is if I was handicapped. Goals. Oh yeah! The engineer who makes it all run. You might want to make some space on that Sophie Shelf Patriot Nation. Woo! Yeah. Here we go. First play of the Super Bowl. Woo! Touchdown, first play. Come on. Nope. Well, it's halftime here. Does not look good. We're sitting here watching Lady Gaga do the halftime show. Does not look good for the Patriots. It's 21 to 3. I cannot believe this game so far. It is not going the way I thought it was going to be. I knew it was going to be a close game, but I did not think this close or it's not even close. I did not expect the Patriots to get blown out in the first half. Um, I'm hoping that they come back in the second. We will see. Oh yeah, let's say this thing is so tight. This hat Shelby's been wearing is like like so tight on me. This game is incredible. Oh my goodness, this game is 20 to 28. So the Patriots have to bring it down the field. Two minutes. Woo! It's a catch. That was the most insane catch. This Alfred knocked it up into the air, and let's see who comes down with it. Oh, that's a catch. Uh, Edelman has ever done, and Edelman has been playing horrible. If you don't know who Edelman is, one of the right, wide receivers on the Patriots, he's normally really good. Tonight, he's been playing sucky, except this one play when he needed it. It was incredible. So, I don't know who's going to win, of course, because it's two minutes left, but it's a better game than what we thought. At first, it was 21 to 0, and now it is 20 to 20. Here we go again! Oh my gosh, this game is insane. So now they're at their 20 or 30. And they have to go to four, they gotta get a touchdown, and then they gotta get a two port conversion to tie it to go in overtime. This is ridiculous, I cannot handle this. I've been FaceTiming my family and stuff. Some of y'all bet don't even like football, so this is probably boring y'all to tears. I'm, I'm sorry, no, they got two leg workouts today. So, y'all can bear through this for two leg workouts. 
Yeah, I've been FaceTiming my whole family, texting everyone, like when they were doing horrible. I've been getting texts all night long, like people, what's going on? Like nagging me, but at least they're coming back where it's not embarrassing now. At the beginning of this game, it was embarrassing. Now, not so much. So the ratings on the commercial, Shelby said, is not good. I've, yeah, I've never, I've not seen one commercial yet that I've really laughed about. And most of the time you see commercials that you like, uh, like the year before, I actually liked a few commercials. Stuck in my head. But none of these commercials have n nothing special. Nothing worth like two million to three million to play on the Super Bowl night. They have all year to come up with this stuff. And this is what they come up with. Oh my god. Two point conversion. Two points. Come on. Two points. Is this game? Come on. Yeah. Oh, flag. Was it touchdown? No, I don't think we did. But. No, I think he did get the touchdown. It I think he made it in. What's the flag? The flag's on the other team. It, it was off sides. Are you sure? Yeah. How I watched him go across. How do you see him? Watch, he jumps. Okay, I'm watching. Look, he jumps. Oh! touchdown yeah oh my word I cannot believe this it is going into overtime Wait, they got a minute left what do they do two-point conversion that was insane two-point conversion that never happens and they did it they got 57 seconds left they're gonna kick it off to Atlanta I'm hoping Atlanta does not do something across the field I'm hoping they don't just run across the field that would be horrible but it looks like I shouldn't jinx it right yeah, now. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna shut my mouth right now. So, facts of the Super Bowl: there has been not one team that has came back in a 10-point deficit in the NFL. I'm not saying the Patriots are gonna win, Ooh. but oh, but no team has ever came back with more than 10-point deficit. So this would be insane. And now I'm getting a FaceTime from from my family. Hang on. All right, so I'm back. I got off the FaceTime with my dad. <laughs> No, the second thing that's never happened, Super Bowl has never gone to overtime You're ever in the history. And I better shut my mouth because they're not in overtime yet. Yeah, but it's so close. They got 11, they have 11 People seconds watch left. The Super Bowl. Update on the game. History has been made. It is now going into overtime. Oh my gosh. And the Patriots get the ball first. Oh my gosh. Wow. The statistics of people winning an NFL game if they get the toss uh, in overtime is like super high. I forgot what the statistics is. It's really high. I need to look it up. Well, the statistics of how many people go into overtime during the Super Bowl is zero. But yeah, but I'm saying NFL games, period. I can't hardly breathe here. This game is like, it's so intense. So intense. Oh my word. Patriots have it. They're driving down. I think they're at the 30 yard line. They're 30. So they score, game is over. <gasps> no way! No! no. Oh. oh, come on. Come on, touchdown. This is it. Five seconds. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. No! No. 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 Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Oh my gosh. That is incredible! Incredible! Game! <laughs> Gabe's not excited. You suck, Gabe. Oh my goodness. They won. The Patriots have won Super Bowl 51. Incredible. This has made history. Tom Brady has five Super Bowl wins. I don't see how people can say that he is not the best quarterback ever to live. And this is incredible. Oh my gosh. Oh, he's saying it too. The broadcaster's saying it too. Wow. Come back in overtime and win. Yeah, I mean, Brady is your man crush Monday tomorrow. Yeah, Brady's going to be my man crush <laughs> Monday for sure.
hands down. This is incredible. This is my sister's Instagram feed from my family, what's going on. My dad and my mom's watching the game here. He's so excited for me. <laughs> He's more excited for me than he is the Patriots. <laughs> oh man, I wish I was there to see him. The whole family. <laughs> Okay, I just got a snap from this guy. I'm gonna show y'all this. This guy actually made me sad on Snapchat. He's an Atlanta fan and he sent me a Snapchat and it's actually making me sad that he's sad. Look at this. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry we did it to you. As a Georgia boy, um, Abel, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> I'm getting real nervous, bro, but I'm keeping the faith right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Drake. Dude, look like you've been doing cardio. <laughs> I am hurt. I am shocked. I am confused. I am not going to work tomorrow. I'm about to throw my computer out this window. <laughs> but real talk, Abel, uh, Brady and Beast now. I ain't, I ain't gonna even deny that. Like, he, he came back through. Ain't it the truth? Well, everyone, I'm gonna end this vlog here on a happy note. I really thought I was gonna be ending it on a very sad note because I really thought we were gonna end up losing. But we pulled it off, and I know half of y'all aren't gonna care. So if you're still watching this vlog, thank you so much, guys. It really means a lot. This is the post game here. They're handing out the rewards. So I'm gonna end this vlog here. Thank you guys for watching. If you like it, guys, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe, and I will see y'all next time. All right, guys, peace.